All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the last part of chapter 15. And we are going to get French. This is Le Chalier's Principal. Oh, ho, ho, vive la France. And here's the way it works. Uh, statement of the principal. A chemical system initially at equilibrium. So we're right down here. Here's our chemical system at equilibrium when subjected to a stress, will react in a way that partially counteracts that stress in order to reestablish equilibrium. So what kind of stresses could we put on here? Well, I'll keep it simple. So here we are, a reaction at equilibrium. So if I were to throw in some product into this reaction, just start adding extra B, I'm now, if I calculate the Q, I've got B over A. I now have more B than, than the equilibrium can support. And so now my Q, because B has gotten larger, uh, my Q is now greater than K. And so the reaction is going to move in reverse. It's going to make some of this B go away. So B concentration is going to have to go down, which is going to cause A concentration to go up. That's the effect of having a reaction at equilibrium where I add some product B. On the other hand, let's say I start removing some of the product. The reaction is at equilibrium and I start removing some of my product B. Well, let's go back uh, to our Q expression. Okay, we've got B over A. And what I've done is I've caused the concentration of B to be less than it was at equilibrium. So the numerator is getting smaller and uh, and so the reaction is going to have to try and make up some of that loss. So in this case, what I've done is I've pushed the reaction over here where Q is less than K because I've lost some of my B. I need to get rid of some of my A. So I need A to go down so that B can go up. So what I've done by removing B is I've made Q less than K. And so the reaction goes in the forward direction to try and replace the missing B. So this is from an energy perspective. Uh, there are going to be some other things we're going to do with regard to temperature. It depends on whether or not it's an exothermic or an endothermic reaction. I'll deal with that when we get there. But just keep in mind, if I have a reaction at equilibrium, the concentration of reactants and the concentration of products are constant. If I do anything to disturb that equilibrium by changing the concentration of either the products or the reactants, I now push the reaction out of equilibrium. And when I push the reaction out of equilibrium, it's going to move in one direction or the other to try and reestablish that equilibrium. So let's see what we've got here. So here's an example of Le Chatelet's principle. I've got this equilibrium reaction for the decomposition of dinitrogen tetroxide into a couple of nitrogen dioxides. The reaction's at equilibrium. I bump up the concentration of my product. So what I've done is I've made the product side of this larger than it should be at equilibrium. Okay, so here is my Q expression, which is uh, uh, nitrogen dioxide squared divided by my concentration of N2O4. And my Q expression, because I've added this, the numerator, is now larger than the denominator was at equilibrium, that's going to make Q greater than K. And if Q is greater than K, 
remember the reaction is going to run in reverse. It's going to try and get rid of some of that NO2 and make more reacted. It needs to drive this concentration up and reduce that concentration, the concentration of product. So all that happens is that the, the concentration of NO2 will go down. That means the reaction is running in reverse. That's the only way it can go. And the concentration of N2O4 goes up. Okay, hopefully this is going to make sense as we go through this little thing. We establish a new equilibrium. However, what is the same is the equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant, which is the ratio of the concentration of the NO2 squared divided by the concentration of N2O4. This ratio is going to be the same ratio as the original ratio when we were here and here with our concentrations. Our new equilibrium is going to be here and here. Different concentrations, same ratio. All right, types of stress that may affect the equilibrium, changing the concentration of a reactant or a product, increasing or decreasing the partial pressure of reaction components. That is analogous to changing the concentrations in a gas phase reaction. It's analogous to changing the concentrations in, let's say, molarity for an aqueous reaction. Increasing or decreasing the temperature, uh, which is going to be different depending on whether it's an endothermic or an exothermic overall reaction. Changing concentrations of reactants or products. If we add a reactant or product, the system shifts away from the increase. It tries to get rid of what you've added. The excess is reduced in this way. Removing a reactant or product. It's just what we said. The system's going to shift toward the decrease to try and replace what you have removed. Changing pressures. All right. Got a specific set of rules here for changing pressures in a gas phase reactions. So if the gaseous moles on the reactant side are equal to the gaseous moles on the product side, pressure changes have no effect. Okay, that's an overall pressure change is not going to have any effect if moles on the reactant side equal moles on the product side by, let's say, adding something like an inert gas. All right. Or changing the volume of the container. Those couple of ways we can change the pressure. Okay, an increase in partial pressure favors the direction that has fewer moles. So just think of this. Think you've got a container and you reduce the volume of the container. You're increasing the partial pressure of all the components that are in that mixture of gases, that equilibrium mixture. So the side of the reaction, whether it's reactant side or product side, that has fewer moles, that's the direction that the shift will be towards. And it shifts toward that side because it's less crowded with the, uh, with the fewer moles of gas. And so it relieves some of that increase of partial pressure. The side with more moles is more crowded. And so we want to get rid of some of those moles. So we shift, it shifts to the side with fewer moles. A decrease in the partial pressure favors the direction with more moles of gas. So let's take that same container. It's at equilibrium. It's a gas phase reaction. We expand the volume of the container. If we expand the volume of the container, we're decreasing the partial pressure. And so uh, the, the reaction will shift toward the side that has more moles so it can increase the pressure, return the pressure to that equilibrium condition. All right, more space, it spreads out. Adding an inert gas does not affect the partial pressures, doesn't change them. Okay, so if you add uh, argon to a, a container, argon is a noble gas, it's inert. If you add it to a gas phase reaction, there is no change in the equilibrium. If you add a catalyst, it does not change the equilibrium. Catalyst just means it gets to equilibrium faster. So changing temperature. 
So if we have an exothermic reaction, it generates heat as a product. So this is a way that it's uh, that it's easy to think about it this way. Let's just put it that way. So I've got A going to B, and let's say this is an exothermic reaction. Well, you know, for an exothermic reaction, heat is a product of that reaction. And if heat is a product of that reaction, just treat it as any product in the same way that you would treat B as a product. That means if you increase the temperature of the reaction. So if you're taking the temperature and you're increasing it, you're just increasing a product and the reaction will shift in the direction that relieves uh, the increase in the in the product okay it's going to try and lower the temperature that you've increased and that will also lower the uh, concentration of your other product B and it will increase the concentration of your reactant A that's all because heat in an exothermic reaction is just another product of the reaction Okay, so just think of it as a product. For an endothermic reaction, this is where heat is a reactant. So this would be heat plus A in equilibrium with product B. And so in this case, heat is a reactant. Now if I increase the temperature, the, re the equilibrium is going to shift to the right. And if that it's trying to lower the increase in heat. So it's trying to bring this back down. In the process of shifting to the right, it's going to decrease the concentration of A and increase the concentration of B. Adding heat favors a shift away from the side of the reaction that it, the heat is added to. Okay, if delta H is uh, less than zero, adding heat favors reactants okay that's over here where heat is a product this is exothermic okay exothermic that's consistent with the first example that we used you can just go over that till you got it okay stresses that do not affect equilibrium concentrations any factor that does not show up in the equilibrium expression doesn't have an effect okay adding or removing a catalyst, adding or removing excess solid. Remember, solids do not go in the equilibrium constant expression because they don't go in the equilibrium constant expression. They, they just don't count. They have to be there for the reaction to happen, but they don't affect the equilibrium. You can have more or less solid, uh, but it doesn't affect the equilibrium adding or removing any substance not involved in the reaction does not change the equilibrium and that includes changing the pressure by adding an inert gas things like argon or noble gases here we go so this is the haber bosch process uh, three moles of hydrogen gas one mole of nitrogen gas in equilibrium with two moles of ammonia. Now, notice the delta H. It's negative. So the first thing you want to do when you've got that, and you know you might have a problem, is where is heat if this reaction has a negative delta H? Well, this is exothermic. And if it's exothermic, then heat is a product of this reaction. And for the purposes of determining which direction the reaction shifts to return to equilibrium, just think of heat as a product if it's negative delta H, if it's an exothermic reaction, okay? All right, assuming we start at equilibrium, what happens to the concentration of N2 when NH3 is added? Okay, NH3, ammonia, is a product and if we increase the concentration of the ammonia, the reaction shifts away from the increase, goes in this direction. 
because it's trying to bring down the concentration, the increase in ammonia, and in the process, it's going to cause nitrogen concentration to go up and hydrogen concentration to go up. What's it going to do to the temperature? It's going to cause it to go down because any shift in this direction is, to, is going to take anything that's on the product side and reduce it and anything on the reactant side and increase it. Okay? All right, we're going to add some hydrogen to this reaction. So here's our hydrogen. It's on the reactant side. And so we add hydrogen. This is a reactant. So it's going to shift away from that stress toward the product side. So let's just take everything one by one. If the reaction is moving from left to right, reactants to products, this is the forward direction, that's going to cause this concentration to go down, this concentration to go up. Guess what's going to happen to the temperature? The temperature is going to go up as well because everything on the product side goes up if the reaction is shifting in that direction. Okay, so that takes care of that. What's, what is the shift trying to do? It's trying to get rid of the excess hydrogen to get back to equilibrium. Argon gas is added, increasing the total pressure. Now, even though the total pressure is increased, argon is an inert gas. It's not involved anywhere in this particular reaction, and so uh, nothing will happen. The, the reaction equilibrium will stay exactly the same, the temperature the same, ammonia concentration, nitrogen and hydrogen concentration the same. Inert gases don't change the equilibrium. The container is expanded, decreasing the total pressure. Okay. If we start our reaction, I'm just going to put it in a cylinder here. Okay, so here's our cylinder, and the reaction is at equilibrium. If I expand the volume of the container, the number of moles of gas that are in that container now have more, more volume to play in. So all their partial pressures go down. So all the partial pressures get lower, and so the reaction is going to shift to the side that has more moles of gas in order to raise those partial pressures to get back to equilibrium. Now, I've got two moles of gas of ammonia over here, and I've got three plus one mole or four moles of gas on the reactant side. So four moles is the greater number of moles than two moles. And so the reaction is going to shift toward the side that has more moles to try and increase these because these, th this side will increase twice as fast as this side or twice as much rather as this side because you have half as many moles over here as you do over here. Okay, so if the container is expanded, decreasing the total pressure, the, side, the reaction shifts to the side with more moles, just to add up the coefficients on both sides. Okay, the container is heated from 298 Kelvin to 330. All right, this is an exothermic reaction. We've just increased the temperature. And if we increase the temperature of this exothermic reaction, we're, incre we're increasing product and the reaction will shift to tr away from that increase in heat to try and decrease the heat. That's the goal is to bring the temperature down in the process of shifting toward the reactant side to the left. Ammonia concentration is going to go down nitrogen concentration will go up, hydrogen concentration will go up. Okay, I think perhaps we might be done. There are a number of 
uh, questions for quiz. I'm going to leave it to you guys to puzzle these out. I'm not going to give you too many hints. Well, this is a gas phase reaction, but recognize tungsten right here is a solid. Let's see. Here's some tungsten. Oh, guys, seem to have a lot of these. The rest are gas phases. See old tungsten? It's all gas phase. More tungsten solid. So what do we know about solids? Do they play a role in causing an equilibrium to shift? No. Why? Because they're not in the equilibrium constant expression. So you can ignore the solid. They have to be there for the reaction to take place, but you can ignore them in shifts to equilibrium. It's an exothermic reaction, so you know heat's a product in this reaction. So there you go. And that's it. So that's the end of chapter 15, ladies and gentlemen.